Guess what time it is, Joe? What time is it, Tiger? It's time to say, welcome to Dundeal. <laughs> welcome to Dundeal. Yep. Why am I getting nothing on the Babe Strong channel? On uh, I, I I had to reload mine too. It was a little strange, but uh, it's there now. You know, but you know what they're doing? They're working on this goddamn Sorry, ad system. Ooh, you, know, you know what they're doing? What the fuck? Oh, excuse my language. Um, yeah. There we go. Uh, let me uh, let me just go pimp this out on my uh, front page real fast. I didn't have time. Right. Hey everybody, welcome to the room. Welcome back to Done Deal. Um, it has been an exciting week in in some respects, in many respects, and uh, glad you guys are here with us. So. Yes, I, I, you know, I made the absolute mistake of trying to uh, front load everything and without pimping the show. I'm an idiot for not doing ah, it. Yes. Well, second. you're not the only one who's a little behind the eight ball this week, Joe. Uh, Merrick is asking if we're not posting replays. Ugh. Merrick, I apologize. This week was supposed to be the week I caught up, and uh, I, I did not. It was a bit of a crazy week for me. Um, I had a lot of personal business I had to attend to, and uh, so I am still, still behind on YouTube, and the replays will catch up, and I swear to you, Scout's honor, this week is it. Um, my goal is to have them caught up by early week, like by Monday. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, don't, just... Mm -hmm. shh, shh, shh. Don't jinx me. Now, and, uh, uh, you guys love the hat. This is uh, John Q. Public made me promise I would wear it for the show. So there you go. Uh, now, for the winner of last week who won the 16-ounce bottle of Mellow Melange, I did not ship it because I've been waiting for a specific item to come in the mail. It has finally come. Uh, it was a little bonus I was going to throw in your box. Oh, that sounds so bad. Uh... Everybody loves uh, a little bonus, Joe. Um, but uh, it's here. Uh, I, I I came in Saturday. It's in your box, <laughs> and uh, it's going to be um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be out in the mail on 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 Monday for you with the bonus in your box. Just want to let you know that. Okay. So <laughs> if you're like, where's my 16 ounces melon lunch? I'm just waiting for the bonus in the box. Oh, I love Northwest <laughs> Rednecks comment. It's the prettiest vapor on Babe Strong and Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more, Northwest. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not pretty. Like, what do you think? I, you know, there's only two people who can get away with pretty: women and Muhammad Ali. He's the only one who kept saying, "I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I'm, oh, I'm okay. not pretty." All right. Sure. What you just said. Whatever. Anyway, so uh, we have uh, a ton to talk about tonight. Uh, we have vape mail to go over. Uh, Tiger, I'm going to start with you on your vape mail because I have a boatload. All right. Well, then I'll try to be brief. Um, first up, I wanted to talk about the Catomizer. Some of you have been asking me, have you built it? Have you built it? Have you built it? Have you built it? And it hadn't come. It finally came and I built it. And it's cool. I like it. Um, it does do what I suspected it would do, and that is saying the airflow coming in from the top and then down into the holes in the inner cap does seem to cool it down. Um, I'm still kind of like, you know, a little bit of a, a, a neophyte almost dripper. So I wouldn't say this is like a cloud chucker, but I didn't really build it to be either. What I will say is the flavor is awesome. Really awesome. I am vaping dark side creations chocolate waterfall in it it is a minty mentally uh chocolate wonderfulness blend and the flavor is just popping so uh in that respect very happy with this atomizer next up and uh there's actually two of them in the house right now because one of them is headed to new jersey what, what, what are you talking about what, 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 what are you talking about what do you what do you mean what am i talking about come on let me look. I want to look. You know, I love to talk until I look because okay. I was picking the show and I know what you're putting up on the screen and I want to look at it. Okay, there we go. Oh, there we go. There she is. 
the dragon. You know, now, Tiger says, um, the dra- now, for those of you who don't know this, the dragon Provary is exclusively in brick and mortars. You cannot buy this on Provary. Uh, so you have to be uh, in the know to get one. Uh, I would, you know, I would say that um, if they give it a little accent, a little green, like emerald green accent inside the the the, the, the dragon outline, Tiger said that's a dumb move. What do you think? I like it, just the polished steel. I think it's just a classic piece the way it is. If you're really, really into green, Joe, then you need to have them change up the LEDs. These are red, and the display, of course, is red. Is that going to show? Okay, well, well what about if we had that. the green... How about this, Tiger? What about the green emerald with the dragon pattern? It's just not my thing, Joe. Hmm. But, anyway, I'll be sending yours this coming week. And I got a great big package of juice from DSV Creation. <laughs> the the rocket oh hush Joe. Um the, the rocket fuel that I have been missing horribly for a week uh, has now arrived. So I'm sending some of that to you as well to try. Really, really yummy absinthe great blend. And uh, so I was pretty happy to see that show up on Friday. And um Oh, 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 the other one that showed up, and I haven't had a chance to really put it through the paces because I need to do some stuff with it, and that is the Black Panzer. This one is from Focal Isik. Let's see if we can get the detail to show up here. There we go. There's the... Is the camera going to do it justice? No, it's just too dark, isn't it? All right, well, trust me. There, okay, we kind of got it there. It says Panzer, trust me. There we go. Okay. So... I am really pleased with what uh, came out of that envelope. Um, the the threading, I, I have managed to make it squeak a couple of times, but really by and large, the threading is very nice on it. The fit and finish is very nice, um, but I was having some trouble with it last night, and today I wanted to do some troubleshooting um, because I'm not ready to blame the mod yet. I did a new build on the Igo M Dripper during the show last night, and I was having trouble with it firing intermittently. And to this moment, I'm still not sure totally if it had to do with the combination of that atomizer and this just not talking to each other very nicely, or whether I need to um, maybe just clean the threads a little bit with the, the black color. I did notice the threads were a little darker too. I wanted to just take some steel wool, lightly, lightly buff them up, and then put some of the magic metal paste I love to use in there to uh, improve the... Um, the threading a little bit just make it totally buttery smooth and uh and of course increase the conductivity so um but i will say first impressions extremely positive on that one very nicely finished looks beautiful so uh i think that brings us up to date on my date mail go oh okay um well this week i had an epic vape mail week um you know, people like to send me things, um, and uh, unfortunately, I cannot get to everything. And what I like to do is, um, I, when I mean I have priority boxes stacked on top of one another, I do. And what I like to do is uh, save them all, and then we do an epic giveaway. You know, like every six months, we'll do, uh, you know, 480 bottles worth of juice, you know, and, and, and we'll give it away. Because that's, you know, I'm never going to get to all the juice that I'm giving and it's sad, but I, I, I just won't. So uh, rather than it languish and uh, go in the garbage, we uh, just give it away to everybody. So uh, that being said, um, the standard, uh, for those of you who know what the uh, standard liquid line is, um, sent us uh, and Mon Envy a huge care package. We got six t-shirts. Uh, I got this one I'm wearing here. Uh, Let's see, uh, Thumper, we got four bottles, uh, Fuse, four bottles, the new Blueprint, four bottles, and Tater, we got four bottles. Um, of course, I'll be giving some of that away on uh, various shows because uh, I don't want that to, uh, you know, go to waste. And uh, something special uh, came in uh, this week. Um, a new juice line, perhaps. Maybe. 
Um, I'm going to show it to you. This here. Now, I don't know if you can see it. Is it coming in clear? Mm -hmm. It's uh, it says Vapor Joe's on the top of it. Turn it a little because we're seeing kind of in the middle of the two sides. There we go. There. Want to see that whole name? So, Vapor Joe's. Bottle of juice with my name on it. Um. I, w I was really, really debating whether to start a juice line. Uh, I didn't want to be what we would call a sellout. Um, uh, a, a place where, um, you know, you, you buy juice and my name's on it and, and you make money. Uh, I thought that was, um, you know, it's a little cliche, a little kitschy. It seems like a lot of people with uh, notoriety in the community do that. So uh, me and Tiger had a long conversation and we thought, um, rather than sell the juice, uh, the only way to get Vapor Joe's juice will be to be given away for free. Uh, it will be the most exclusive, most rare, most um, hard to get juice in the community. But not because you can buy it, because you have to get it because you want it. Now, me and Tiger have been going over um, certain juice vendors, uh, certain flavors, and um, we've decided on certain things. We'll, we'll bring them up later uh, in future shows. But right now, uh, there will be a Vapor Joe's juice line, but you will only get it uh, if you win it. Uh, we will not sell it at any cost. And uh, I think that's... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? It's it pays homage to our, our, our viewers because, uh, you know, I'm not a juice vendor, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not a juice maker. I, uh, I don't want to put my name on a label and just be like, oh, I'm Vapor Joe. Here's an awesome uh, bottle of juice. Buy it because my name's on it. I think that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's really, really dumb. So, uh, yeah, again, so the only way you're going to get this is to get it for free. And uh, it will be uh, sparse. I mean, we'll give a few bottles away on Dundeal. We'll give a few bottles away on um, on Mon Envy. We'll give a few bottles away here and there on other shows. And that's the only way this juice will get out to the masses. If I see you at a bait meet, maybe I'll give you a bottle. But uh, it will be the most exclusive, most hard-to-get juice in the industry. Oh, Joe's playing hard-to-get. Yes, I definitely playing hard to get. But it, you know, I mean, it's to be honest with you, um, for the time and effort that we're going to put into this juice line, I think it should it should be hard to get because nobody's going to be able to buy it. I mean, if somebody rolled up to me and said, "Joe, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars for that bottle of juice," I'd be like, sorry, nope, can't have it. No juice for you. No juice for you. And that was uh, something uh, you know I brought up to Tiger. You know, I was like, Tiger. Uh, what do you think about starting a juice line? The first thing she said uh, that I brought up, you know, she was like, I think that's a great idea. Is don't sell it. Give it away. And that's what we're going to do. So there you go. You can uh, tune in in the in the hopefully not very distant future to, to win Vapor Joe's juice. And we're going <laughs> to... No, no, no. It's not Vapor Joe's. It's our juice. <laughs> And we're going to have, uh, the way we're going to do it, it's going to be four flavors. Uh, it's going to be uh, 0, 3, 6, and 12. And that's as high as it's going to go. Uh, now, somebody's like, I've never tried peanut butter. Those were just preliminary, uh, preliminary flavors. I was going through a juice company. just wanted to try their flavors. Those are not going to be the four flavors we're going to pick. It was just something that I wanted to try out the juice company, uh, see how they did, and... Uh, the, those will not be the final flavors but it was just a little premonition a little omen to things to come now Joe uh, did you want to talk about the vaping underground we have a question how's that coming well, well it's it's 1 a.m. Uh, 1 15 a.m. here uh, you guys have four or five hours no like <laughs> 
Uh, Vaping Underground is coming along um, slowly but surely. What happened was um, I have a problem and uh, I'm a perfectionist. Uh, And we were about to launch and the software that uh, we were going to use, the Bolton um, version 5, has a shit ton of bugs. Um, And uh, I wasn't comfortable. Uh, and uh, our head tech, Lucidius Rage, his job was to deliver a uh, forum that was ready to go, perfect, exacting, and, you know, to my vision, and it couldn't be done. So we completely scrapped that forum software and went with the new forum software. I'm uh, pleased to announce that uh, that new software is... Uh, above and beyond anything uh, that I ever wanted in a form. It's absolutely beautiful, and we are on schedule now to release probably uh, mid-June. So we're looking at uh, 10 days out, maybe. A little before, a little after, but about 10 days out. And we are going to uh, go live and go for, you know, in force to get rock and rolling. And we want the Canadian community to be on board. That's a huge, huge thing. And I'd like uh, Tiger to talk about that a little bit. Well, um, you know, there are other forums, of course, we have access to. I mean, one of the very first ones, the one of the most famous uh, big ones, was probably the first place I stumbled across as a new vapor um, for a, a place for information and to connect with other vapors. It served its purpose for me. I quickly became frustrated with it and haven't darkened the door since. Um, you know, there's been other fledgling forums that have come and gone and waxed and waned and uh, what seems to remain is the need for a place where, uh, you know, there's reasonable moderation as opposed to just, uh, you know, power tripping and and uh, and stepping on vendors. We, we believe that the vendors are part of the community as well. You know, the vendors are vapors at, at heart. And uh, they need to be able to uh, participate without all of the crazy limitations we see elsewhere, uh, such as you know not even being able to allow, uh, not even being allowed to participate in threads um, because it's not the vendor forum. You know, regardless of the fact they're not talking about their stock or selling anything, they're just answering questions and helping. Um, right. But uh, you know, I, 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 there's more vendors that have lost their accounts that way than I can shake a stick at. So. The, the need was there for something that was actually for the community, and uh, we aim to fill it. Right. Uh, the I, I brought this up uh, on the last show uh, on Monday. I, mean, I you don't want to get too, 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 you know, wordy on it. But basically, we're not greedy. We're not here to make money from vendors simply because they make money. I think that's a stupid thing. Um, vapor uh, vendors are vapors at heart uh vendors buy you know accessories they buy mods they buy juice <clears throat> just like any other vapor does and i think they have the right to voice their opinion on any form they want um uh, but the problem is on a lot of forums uh vendors have to pay for the right to speak and i think that's stupid i think that's um i guess um just not good business and uh you know vendors above all should have our utmost respect because if it wasn't for the vendor none of us would have what we have to vape on Mm -hmm. uh they put out the risk they put out the money and uh we buy from them and uh we have our vape gear if it wasn't for them we wouldn't have our vape gear so uh i think uh you know the vaping underground is going to be a good place for everybody uh to speak their opinion talk about you know you know everything from you know just general stuff all the way up to uh, advanced uh, wick and wire coils and, and of course vapors will be uh, vendors will be there talking about their product now uh, ca- uh, Canada is going to be a very important part of this uh, forum uh, Canada is uh, an important part of my vape uh, journey and uh, because of that it's going to be an important part of vaping underground um, Canada has some of the, in my opinion, pound per f- pound for pound, the best vaping community. So, like, you know, I understand the, the the United States has a huge vaping community. It's like blows away the Canadians in terms of size. But pound for pound, I I, I really like the Canadian vaping community better 
because there's less drama. Their juice is better. I'm sorry, American vaping people, but they just have better juice. And uh, there happens to be an absolutely gorgeous lady named Tiger Tiger who lives in Canada. So I'm, I'm, uh, my opinion is changing. Oh, I don't but. mind that <laughs> bias at all. Uh. But uh, generally speaking, I uh, really love the Canadian vaping community, and they need to come aboard uh, on the underground. And uh, all Canadian vendors are also welcome to get their own sub forms. And that's the uh, that's the gist on the underground. Uh, like I said, about 10 to 12 days from now, I'd like to open the doors. Um, now, with 97, uh, 97 people in the room, understand, uh, when you first join the underground, it's going to be empty. There's not going to be posts. Like, you know, you, you roll up on the forums because this is a new forum. Uh, but it is a uh, an opportunity uh, for you to uh, you know break ground in a new forum that's going to be a huge forum. Mm-hmm. So, Starting from the ground up, so uh, you can you can be basically one of the pioneers. And uh, right now we're just in the final stages of uh, trying to break everything we can, so we can we can prefix all the uh, all the possible uh, issues we'll run into, and then as Joe said, mid month look for the opening. So yes, the hat. People are mentioning the hat. I, I this is by request tonight. I actually had my hair up and I, I let it back down into a ponytail uh, because there was a request for the hat. So there it is. Well, Joe, shall we launch into some deals? Uh, absolutely. All right. I got one that's kind of interesting to start with. And I got to be straight up with you. I have never been a real fan of the Morasses until now. Um, never been. Never been. Um, it's not a form factor that really appeals to me. But I'll tell you what does. The silver version. I kid you not plated with silver so you know for those of you who are familiar with all the mods coming out that have the silver plated contacts now the reason for that is because silver is a better conductor than even copper uh steel being the bottom and then brass being better than steel copper better than brass silver beats them all so uh, a silver plated mod got my attention i'm really curious about this one and uh, how it's gonna hit so there you go the first one I'm aware of that's readily mass available, silver uh, mod. To be honest with you, I'm not even aware of any silver plated mod. I, I was being careful when I said that because I'm not totally up to date on high end stuff. There's a lot going on out there that I don't become aware of. The uh, only the only right silver, I mean, only silver mod I'm aware of that's that's out there. It's pure silver. Is a Carabella, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm not aware of any. There's plenty of gold plated mods out there, mm-hmm. but. I am unaware of any silver-plated mod in existence, other than this one. Derby. I mean, somebody may correct me, but I'm I'm unaware of any. No, as as am I. Derby better uh, brass or copper? Copper beats brass for conductivity. In, in order from from least conductive to best, uh, you get steel, brass, copper, silver. Yeah, somebody wants to know. There's an auto cotter. Yeah, there's there's plenty of auto yeah. cotter gold and silver mods. Um, yeah, absolutely. But they're thousands and thousands of dollars. But in terms of mass production silver plated mods, I think this is the only one in existence. Um, and quite frankly, I'm sick of gold plated mods because they look like they look like brass. They look like you know copper. They they, they just have that look to them. They're common. They're cheap. Silver has a, a luster that that goes beyond uh, simple stainless steel, and uh, I, I I'm digging this whole silver plated thing. I think I think um, well, you look all massive when you wear white. What? Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I look really big when I wear white. <laughs> okay. It's um, kind of massive, Jeff. Um, it's silver uh, looks um, massive. We'll use that word again. Uh, yes, definitely. I think silver is a very dominant color in the uh, in, when it comes to mods. Um, well, it has a it's far better than stainless steel in my opinion. And as we're aware, it it will definitely uh, be that silver tone, but much brighter than steel. It will tarnish, of course, as silver will, but not nearly as fast as the brass or copper. I mean, as soon as you start to handle them, they start to take on that patina, where your silver might just need a little bit of uh, of uh, 
polishing up every so often once in a while so so yeah there you go silver maraxis check it out let me know because i am uh, interested to hear how this one how this one performs yeah. All right, now what else we got? Now I promised myself. I realize I'm into the mechanical mods and you know rebuilding, and I kind of you know sometimes can err on the side of uh, waiting my deals to that. So I promised myself I wouldn't leave out the non-rebuilders this week. I remember you guys. I'm also a non-rebuilder. I use uh, lots of fill and vapes as well. So here you go. One of the best deals I found this week. The cheapest Nautilus we've seen to date. 1516. Now this one's available in two different resistance right out of the box. You can get 1.6 or 1.8 ohm. And of course the replacement heads are available in whatever you please. So, you know, get a variety because, you know, leaves you more options. Yeah, I mean, uh, fifteen dollars and sixteen cents. Uh, now, we're, we're, uh, is this considered a clone, or is this a r the real deal, or are we going to go through the whole rigmarole that we did before, where it's like, um, yeah, it checks out, and it, they're just lying to us, period. Well, I can't say for sure until these start to land. Uh, this one is coming in cheaper than the uh, one I first bought. Uh, as you guys, some of you guys are aware, I'll tell you. I did get one of the ones from Fast Tech that is lower priced. It was uh, 17 and change, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, expecting that I was getting a clone. And much to my surprise, I ran the serial number at Aspire and found out I have an authentic. So, you know, my 1775 Nautilus at Aspire tells me it's the real deal. These ones, we'll have to wait and see. They do come boxed up uh, the way the original does, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see. For the lower price, I'm expecting them to be a knockoff. But, you know, I, you know I'll I, be honest with you. I'm sick of these knockoff, authentic Nautilus tanks. To be frank with everybody, uh, I'm a firm believer. Um, so one or two people from the Aspire team left. And they went to the same company that makes the real Aspire, and they made their own. Yeah. I mean, uh, but everything is exact, except, uh, I'm wrong, I'm sorry, the clone actually has a thicker glass tank. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not a, uh, I'm, I'm, this is a case where the clone versus the original doesn't really matter. Uh, this is well, nothing more than, than, than uh, in my than, vaping experience, I can't tell the difference between the two of them. Really yeah, can. now you have you have you have the clone versus the original? I do. Unfortunately, now I did not bring the original to my desk. The original is in the other room. I apologize for that. And it's got an empty tank right now. That's why I didn't grab it. But I can't tell the difference in the vape, Joe. If I'd have put the yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. How's the vape experience? Cuz that's really all that matters. They're not they're both Nautilus to me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, I mean this is this is the this is the second one. This is not the one you sent me. This is the one from Fast Tech that checked out authentic, but does have the very very subtle differences. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I think I think these authentic serial numbers, scratch and sniff uh, side panels that you gotta you know check this. I think that's nothing more than a company trying to protect itself. Uh, they all go to the same manufacturer. They all make the same goddamn tanks, and. Um, you know, in the end, it's the same thing, except somebody has prettier packaging and an authentication system versus somebody who doesn't. And I'll tell you, I'll be really, really honest about this. I am horribly pragmatic when it comes to this issue. I do not want to pay for your pretty packaging because I can't vape the box. So I'm much more interested in what's inside. The box can be plain white for all I care. Oh, somebody just put a link in the room to your hat, Tiger. It's really <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, somebody just put in the room, they saw a place to get a Mega Kanger for $19 with coupon. Could you put that in the room, please? Because that is an yep. amazing Do share. Do you share. John Q. Public, please. And, and my hat has now been cloned. <laughs> nothing. You know what? I love it. Your hat means nothing unless it's on your head. <laughs> Well, now you guys know where I do my shopping. Actually, technically, this one did come um, from overseas, not AliExpress, but from overseas. So it's probably the same people anyway. 
Alrighty. Ah, uh, now, okay. Well, now you know. Back to my roots. I I didn't forget about the non uh, mechanical people, but uh, you know, I, I I do I do know my roots. So I got to talk about one more, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up and let Joe talk for a minute. Um, let's put this link in the room. There you go. And uh, oh, you were close, Big Bam. That I mean, that's coming. That's coming. I the wanted tree to talk of about, life. Yeah, now in a 26650. Now, this is the second iteration we've seen of this. Um, this one is, they, they changed the, the description on the first one, so there was a few things a little bit unclear about that one. What we do know now is this one is cheaper, it looks really nice, and it is definitely brass and steel. So, with the silver plated contacts, by the way, woo, for silver. So uh, 26650 for those of you enjoying those larger format mods. Uh, and may I out. point out 223 on site for Vapor Just Canada currently. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, yes. The traffic has been uh, pretty pretty good. You guys are you guys are checking our deals out and I appreciate it. Now let me ask you Tiger mm -hmm. for opinion. I brought this up on Mon Envy. I got multiple opinions from multiple people. Now, the Tree of Life is a technically a clone. However, if you make a mod that never existed in its size, or uh, like for instance, if you made a 26650 Nemesis or 26650 Tree of Life, is that still a clone? Considering they've never made it that size before. It's a gray area, Joe, and uh, the way I'll answer that is it's not a clone because it didn't exist. Prior. However, you are still trying to sell your product based on someone else's name, idea, and logo. So it is definitely a gray area in that respect. Um, and and Elf, you know, in it at the, at the heart of it, I, I think I agree with you um, in that if you upsized something and you're still using their logo and name and the look of it, you know, it's it's still in essence a clone. Okay. So if we took a if we took the logos off, well, that would make it an original. Um, it depends, I guess, on the detailing. Some mods are really, really uh, recognizable in terms of their detailing. Um, you know, like this one does have some uh, recognizable details on the caps. Uh, the Maraxis, of course, there's is a one of a kind. It's the only thing that looks like. Well, yeah, Maraxis. Um, is, yeah. So you know. There's copies, there's clones, there's one to ones. Um, if you're if you're totally basing it on somebody else's idea, it's a clone. Hmm. But. Okay, uh, I, you know, I just wanted your opinion on that because I got I got multiple opinions from different people, and and uh, you know, yours is uh, pretty much like mine, where you know, yeah, I agree with you on 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 that, but um, at the same time, uh, I'm a big fan of. Well, you should have thought of it. Sorry, you didn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, there, you know, the Nemesis is, is, is like, for instance, something like the Nemesis, which is a huge, you know, uh, staple in the community in terms of, of, of mechanicals. But you know, they're they're downsizing to a fourteen five hundreds and bringing them out to the twenty six six fifties, and it's like, well, you can't really get mad at somebody selling them uh, because you guys haven't even made that yet. Well, you know my feelings on the clone market, Joe. I'm not proud. I have lots of clones on my desk. And I personally don't think it hurts the original modders, I, with one exception. The exception being the folks that are just trying to cash in heavy and, uh, you know, using artificial means of limiting supply so that they can charge ridiculous prices. Those are the ones that get hurt, and uh, to them I say... Or the ones oh, well. that are clones for the original, too. Um, now, okay, now that's just unscrupulous. That, right. That's very simple. And to anyone looking to buy uh, an original, authentic, uh, you, you definitely want to do your homework, make sure you know who you're dealing with, especially if you're dealing with the aftermarket. Right. Um, but in terms of the clone market, I, I think it's a nice way to put uh, devices into people's hands that otherwise they would be inaccessible to. It's also a way to introduce people to something that they aren't willing to spend $200 out of the gate for, $300. But if they kind of get to try it and see what the form factor is like, see how it works, and then realize that if they do pay the, the greater uh, fee, they are getting a better finish, a better fit, you know, all this kind of stuff. 
I think in a lot of cases, what we see is the clone market feeds the authentic market because once people get a taste, they want the real deal. In any case, that's just my opinion. My. Yes, I had poutine once, and so now I have a girl. And, and Shmo, uh, you've got an excellent <laughs> point talking about copyright logos and names. Absolutely. And uh, what we're seeing is a slow but sure shift to no logo clones. I'm all for it. Um, you know, it's not okay for me to build a car and slap board on it. It's just not. And uh, But I can definitely build a Focus-like vehicle and call it whatever I want. And if I want to undercut Ford, more power to me. Uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, co- right, copyright, logo names, and trademarks. Uh, understand how these things work, at least in the United States, uh, those in the audience. You do not need to file a trademark in the United States for your item to be trademarked. Uh, simply putting a TM over your logo and proving that you were first in uh, in um, in service will let you uh, uh, bring somebody to court. Uh, filing it in uh, federal court, uh, filing it federally will allow you to make it a counterfeit claim, which will let it to be a federal law, and you will go to prison. Blah blah blah. Now, example: Bear Joe's is a trademarked name. However, there is a company in Austin who uses my name and owns a vape shop. Am I going to go sue them? No. Why? Because I'm not a dick. That's why I'm not going to do it. Because I'm not a greedy fuck. Okay? Somebody wants to use Vapor Joe's and open a a, a, a a vape shop. Let them do it. You know? I mean, it's not a big deal. I'm not going to... I'm Vapor Joe. You can't have my name. No. I'm not greedy. Go, go have at it. I don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't always agree with this uh, trademark and uh, copyright bullshit. To be honest with you. Now, there's a couple questions in the room I'll just quickly uh, catch up with, and I'm sorry if I've missed one. Um, ha- Tiger, how do you torch color Delrin? Y- you don't. You melt Delrin with a torch. Um, <laughs> don't do that. Do not do that. Um, and uh, what was the other one here? Um, someone was asking about building. Ashley, I think it was you. We, we don't typically build on this show. It's really fast-paced. We're talking about so many deals. If I tried to do a build during this show, um, we would still be on the air probably at 2 in the morning Pacific, and the sun would be coming up for Joe. So, uh, no, no, we won't be building today. So let's, uh, let's, let's talk building, and let's go on to your next deal, Tiger. Oh, do you do you have one you want to do? I have one queued up, but I just don't want to... Queued up, baby. We'll, I'll, I'll take the next one. All right. In that case, uh, Big Bam, you were ahead of the game on this one. Let's talk about the Ember replica. And I, I even have a picture of it to show you. There you go. The Ember. All brass construction with copper contact. So this puppy is going to be a heavy hitter, and you're getting all three tubes. So you can use any 18 series battery. Um, looks pretty sweet to me, and uh, I think this is the beginnings of some good things because this, of course, is the first in the fire series, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll see more of those coming. But for 2738 for the set of three tubes, I think this is going to be a, a heavy hitter, a, a decent you, you model. Know, I'll be honest with you, Tiger. I didn't even know. Uh, maybe I overlooked this, but we gave away a legit Ember tonight on Mount Ebby, which was a hundred and change. Uh, this is a direct clone to that to that mod, the Ember? Um, well, that would be my understanding. And Zach Attack, um, perhaps the logo isn't coming through well enough on the picture, but uh, this one has the fire logo. This is the Ember. Let me take a look, because uh, look at that bottom button. Um, go on, talk about it, Tiger. I'm just, I'm just... Well, um... I didn't get a good look at your original, Joe. No, I did do a little bit of research when I was looking into this one. To oh, see, no, no, no. But, it's, uh, it's called Element. I'm sorry. Element. The el- Yeah, they're calling it the Element. Okay, well, this is kind of weird because I did uh, check out the originals and the one with the fire logo mm. I, I was reading was the Ember. So uh, is there some uh, misinformation or... No, no, I just think what happens is, is like, sometimes Fast Tech will rename something. Oh, yeah. Like, it had the lo- loose, I don't even remember, it was, like, L-U-X-T-R-A-4-7-19, and, and it was really the the Spyrax. Like, sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll rename things, like, they're naming this the Element, and it really is, you know, the Ember, you know what I mean? So, sometimes they, they, they just do that, uh, I guess, to avoid any issues or... or, or or complications, so 
um, you got to do a little bit more research, uh, like for us as, as, as deals guys. So you put it down as the ember, it says element, but it's really the ember. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, hello, G Dubs, and I don't know how it's rude to say hello. I don't. That's not rude from where from where I come from. So hi back to you. And uh, to those of you boiling and torching and microwaving yeah. egos, please wear protective eyewear and. and t- uh, wait. And, and be sure <laughs> to film it and put it on YouTube. Um, yeah. Please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm please, just saying, if you're going to be that dumb and boil that. your batteries, please put it on YouTube. I, I know boiling won't hurt your battery. I mean, won't won't kill you. Microwaving may, but, but, but boiling definitely won't hurt your battery. Yeah, these, these are stories I, I don't want to see the aftermath on Facebook, so... Um, so the next deal, uh, of course, I'm going to be talking about uh, is actually not a deal. Uh, I want to talk about this new thing coming out of Indonesia. Ah. Um, now, we have the Vape World Expo going on right now. Uh, it's a huge, uh, way bigger than I thought it was going to be. Uh, really, really, really big vape meet. Um, well, not really a vape meet, more like a uh, trade meet. But uh, while they... Uh, they play uh, Vapor Joe's breaks the news with this new 50 watt DNA style chip coming out uh, has a slightly uh, different display but using the same style display in the sense of uh, length and width um, from what I'm understanding it goes to 50 watts um, and uh, it's really going to rock the house. Now, there are some complications coming out of Indonesia. Everything vape related is illegal in Indonesia, but uh, a board with a display is not. Um, uh, It's no wonder uh, why they are taking uh, this board uh, as their uh, big easy thing, because it's, you know, they can't sell ego batteries, they can't do juice, they can't do anything, but this is an electronic component and it's, it's not illegal. Uh, so they're really pushing hard to uh, to become a competitor in the wattage uh, you know market, and uh, I'm really really excited about it. Now I don't have a whole lot of details. I was just sent to this. I was just sent to me an email with a functioning chip. Um, now people are saying, uh, oh, the Raptor does 120 watts, blah blah blah. I agree, but the Raptor is uh, a variable voltage uh, chip, and this is a variable wattage chip. Two different beasts. Mm-hmm. And this will be the first uh, mass-produced, out-of-the-gate 50-watt um, chip known. Uh, there are some claims that the SX350 uh, is upgradable to 50 watts, um, but uh, this one is out-of-the-gate at 50 watts. And uh, if we're seeing it at 50 watts now, two months from now, we're going to see a 75, we'll see an 80 and a 90, and uh, I'm really, really excited about it. And the problem with all this is, is this putting a valve behind so let's remember evolve was always ahead uh they came up the dna uh then they came up with dna 20 the dna 30 and china was always behind they had all the bamos and the uh, z maxes that were at 15 watts now uh we have companies like this and uh china coming out with 30 watt 50 watt boards evolve is now sitting in the back seat they need to step up now they need to come out with a bigger board because, I mean, really? Are you going to buy a, a DNA 30 device for 300 bucks? Really? I wouldn't. I mean, <laughs> you could buy so much better now out of China for, for a quarter of the price. I'm just chuckling at Son of Sam. He, he has agreed with us now. Do not torch, boil, or heat your ego. Uh, a spinner, however, will hold up. Now, Elf tells us no! his flashlight is 500 watts. So, um, you know what, Elf, I'm, uh, you know. Wow, what kind, be what careful What power source that. is that? <laughs> <laughs> you have a small nuclear power plant for that, or? What kind of, what kind of disclaimer does that come with? <laughs> so, that is the, um, that is the new, uh, news. Now, let's get on to the chips that are for sale. Um, now... Uh, Fast Tech has released the uh, the Qi, uh, the Qi DNA, uh, CH DNA 20 and CH DNA 30. I didn't even mention the 20 because for two bucks more you get the 30. It's not even worth mentioning the 20. Mm-hmm. Um, the 30s are available for 27 dollars. 
Um, they come with the full chipset uh, and the display, and you get your little um, um, uh, micro USB port that, you, of course, you solder in with wires, and uh, you're able to charge your uh, LiPo or uh, 18650 battery. Um, this, to me, is extremely significant uh, because now uh, modders have access to a chipset that you can just go on Fast Tech and buy. It's not like you have to go to a wholesaler and buy uh, MQ of uh, 50. You just go to Fast Tech if you want to buy one or you want to buy 100, you can, and you can start modding. Uh, even if you don't like the chipset for whatever reason, you can use it to test making mods. So just say you're an amateur modder, you buy yourself a couple of aluminum boxes, you buy a couple of these uh, chipsets, you want to start practicing, this is the perfect opportunity to get yourself into the game. And if you're you know, an experienced modder, what the hell? Uh, they're cheap, $27. There's <laughs> absolutely no reason why an American or Canadian modder can't make a high-end uh, variable wattage device for under 100 bucks. You're, the chipset is only $27. You're, the rest is going to be less than that. So you figure it's going to cost you 50 bucks to make the whole unit. You're still going to make 100% profit on the, the completed mod. And yes, Scorpio, Orpio, you can make a crone. <laughs> and you can make a crone. <laughs> I love but our viewers. You I, guys I are love, hilarious. I love I just love the fact that it's out there. It's, it's, it's everybody can buy it. It's available. And that's the other problem. You know, Evolve does make uh, top of the line chips. They're wonderful. I have uh, at least seven Evolve devices. The problem is you can't. They're not available. You can't buy the fucking chips. So that's that's the reason why China stepped up and, and have made these. Um, are they exact to the DNA thirty? No. Uh, do they have quirks? Some. Uh, but. All in all, they act pretty much the same, and for half the price and availability, I think uh, if I was a modder, I would definitely uh, start playing around with these. Definitely. Alrighty. All right, well, Tiger. Let's Enough of my gears. pontification. Let's move on to your deal. Well, I was just going to say, let's switch gears and, and talk about chargers, because we don't talk about chargers that much, but there's been a lot to talk about lately. Um, last week, we became aware of the the Knight Core D4 and D2. I'm going to talk about both. Um, they are available now. There's places that have them. Thank you, Big Bam. Okay, you got her. I'm going to not put mine in, because there it is. Big Bam got the, the link for me. Um, this one is available. Now, they they are cheaper out there in some places, but um, this one is available with free shipping and ships right away, as I understand it. So that was a really good deal. And yeah, Big Bam's already got the second one I was going to talk about. If you're not looking for the D4, uh, but you're more interested in a two-bay charger, there's also the D2. Now, Joe ran a deal, excellent for America, better price. If you're in America, uh, it is, uh, I think, what was that? Was that $29.99, Joe? Correct. That you found the D2 for? Mm -hmm. Free shipping within America. That one is expected to ship later in June. This one is available now and ships everywhere for $34.95. So for Canada, um, you know, the $29.99 one was a better deal, but when you have to put 15 bucks shipping on it, it's not such a great deal anymore. Um, right. So uh, this one will take longer because it's coming from overseas, um, but it'll ship now. So there you go. A few different options on those chargers. Now these are really cool. They've got the LED display. They tell you everything. The only thing this thing doesn't do is make toast for you, it seems. <laughs> um, overcharge protection, everything like that. You can really put in pretty much any rechargeable battery. It'll take the NICAD, the uh, the lithium. Well, yeah, and that's and that's the big thing. Um, the and and thing, it knows what it is right away. You put it in. You don't have to set anything. You just let it do its thing. Right. That that's the that's the um, that's the beauty thing. You know, Nikor. Um, you know, Oh, we all have night cores. Most of us, we have a you know a night core two or night core i four. I have a few of those. And now uh, this is the answer to the. What happened was uh, the EFest came out with the uh, LUC uh, 
um, charges, which are just wonderful. Um, but Nightcore was like, oh, okay, we need, we need to step up our game. Um, this one, um, straight up, charges everything. IMR, lithium ion, uh, it, it, it charges the uh, NICADs, the life pose, um, and it's auto. So, like, just say you, you have a 26650 in one bay, and then you have your remote control uh, rechargeable AAA battery that you've never put in the mod, but it's still a rechargeable. You can still put it in this. It charges everything. I mean, all right, so it I doesn't, charge... I don't think it does 9 volt. Okay, no. that's the only one I think it doesn't do is 9 volt. Uh, so I can charge my mod batteries and my kids' toy batteries at the same time, and I, I love that. I love that freedom. I have and have been using faithfully uh, a Nightcore i4, and more recently Joe sent me an i2. Love them both. Great chargers. No complaint at all. But I am really attracted to some of the added functions and uh, the LED display that's so um, exacting, and the fact that the i this uh, the D2 of course is similar to the I2 in the other two channel. You can put not pairs of batteries, but you can have something different in each one. Earlier this afternoon, I was charging a 26650 in one bay and an 18350 in the other. No problem. Uh, the D4 differs from the I, uh, I4 in that instead of the I4 where you had to have things in pairs, one and three, two and four are pairs. Um, you had uh, you have four channels on the D4. So you could really, you, you can throw anything you want in there and uh, go to town. No worries. Right. And and the other uh, the other interesting thing about this charger is it detects the difference between ICR and IMR batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the only charger I know, even even the uh, the, the LUC battery, uh, the, LC, the LUC from EFES doesn't do this. Uh, this detects the difference between, say, a uh, AWIMR and say something like a trust bar it knows the difference it detects the difference and it applies the proper amperage in you know the proper uh, milliamps uh i mean proper amperage to put into the battery which i think is a really cool thing because um if anybody will tell you uh if uh i use the luc and, and i want to charge my batteries quick i push it to two amps i put a 18350 in there sure it'll charge it quick but it's going to kill the battery quicker yeah but with this, this is an, a total auto system, and it basically puts the the, uh, the optimal amount of amperage into the battery when you're charging it. And I think that's a, a really, really cool thing. And of course, the chemistry, you know, it detects the chemistry. I don't know how it detects chemistry, but it yeah. does, which I think is a really cool thing. Alrighty. Well, moving away from chargers, I promised you I was going to talk a little bit more about the Catomizer tonight, and I will not let you down. They've come out with a second version. Now, this one is a little bit more expensive than the initial one was. The initial one was nine and change. They want 13 for this one. Uh, with my experience with the first one I got, I definitely threw one of these in my cart. Uh, because this one, unlike the first one, and I'll pull the cap, I'll show you my messy little build. There you go. There you go, Ashley. There's your building for tonight, if it focuses. Nice black coils. i got to burn those clean here. But uh, this one is a three-post configuration. Of course, the new one more uh, closely matches the atomizer that inspired it with the five-post configuration. So designed to take advantage of all those air holes. Let me pull um, the, the, the sleeve off the cap here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disassemble this thing completely for you. There we go. Push the, the sleeve off. So you can see under the cap, under the outside cap, there's the inner cap, and it's got four holes. And I was a little puzzled by those four holes, considering it's only the the, the three posts. Uh, and I thought, okay, well, they're just planning for, uh, you know, a four uh, um, uh, coil build. Blech, went, went blank. <laughs> but uh, which you, of course, can do with three posts. But uh, the new version is really a, a better uh, copy in that it mimics uh, those uh, four, four negative posts available to you. And for those of you who are wondering how this worked, while well, I have it apart, I may as well show you. There was a lot of concern about this. Uh, the two-part outer cap, let me show you. 
the outer cap, you've got your brass with the cat on it, and there's holes in the top, okay? You see them there? There's one, and there's uh, three more around the outside, okay? Then you've got a stainless steel piece that fits the over that allows you to adjust that airflow, okay? So now I can, I can either line up those holes completely, which I tend to do, and just run it wide open, or close them off a little bit, pinch off some of that airflow. Now, people looked at that and they said, what is the airflow doing way up high there? That's not going to feed the coils. That's not going to work. Wait for it. The inner cap, the holes are down lower. What happens is you've essentially got an air-cooled atomizer. Your air enters at the top, travels down the side, and then in where your coils are, bam. Um, I'm liking it. Enough that I really want to try the five post So There you go. Yeah. Now, doesn't the um, also the new one that popped on Fastac actually have more air holes at the top? I don't believe it has more. Uh, as I, unless I'm missing something, uh, this one has four. That one has four. But I think they they appear a little bit bigger. Okay. Now, you know, because um, you can see in the pictures what that looks like there. I'm going to show you what mine looks like by comparison. I think, and I, I, you know, it might be a trick of the pictures. I'll tell you when it shows up. But I think the new one does have bigger. Air okay. Gotcha. Alrighty. So, that is the catamizer. Now, Joe, did you have something you want to jump in? Oh, yeah. I got oh, something to talk about. Yeah, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. All uh, right, I lay got, it on um, uh, the Guar, Guar line. Um, now, the Guar line from uh, Mount Baker Vapor uh, was huge. Um, uh, sold out instantly. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the room. Um, the Guar liquids now return to uh, Mount Baker Vapor. Um, they are really good. Um, now, Mount Baker Vapor was never known for, you know, being an epic juice uh, company. They were always known for, well, cheap, good juice. You know, you want seven bucks for 30 mils, you can go over there, you can buy it. They're basic, they're good. Uh, it's not made in the basement, it's not made in China. But what they did is they uh, hooked up with the people from Guar, and they started the Guar line. Now, that Guar line I had over at uh, Bash was phenomenal, really, really good. Um... Uh, glass bottles, um, uh, the flavors were top-notch. I'm a big German chocolate cake fan. They had a German chocolate cake that's over the top. And um, they uh, they come to $9 and change with coupon, and they're back in stock. They ship around the world, so, you know, and they're pretty reasonable in terms of price. Uh, I think it's four or five different flavors. I've had the bloodbath and the German chocolate cake. Uh, the Guar Y4, Smokey really liked. I have not tried the other two. Uh, but it's basically the, a way for Mount Baker Vapor to get an attitude. And uh, they, I think they did pretty good. Unfortunately, when they launched the Guar line, the lead singer of Guar died. Uh, died of a heroin overdose. Uh, which is sad, because I've been watching Guar for a really long time. But uh, the Guar fluids are there. They're good. Uh, they're really awesome, and um, you might want to check them out. They're just they're just really good, and they offer them both with and without food coloring. Uh, for those of you who uh, don't mind uh, a little green or red in your juice, that's okay. For those of you who want it just straight, uh, just you know, no food coloring, they offer both. Oh, and just to address Jess's question, for, it was the D2 uh, that was uh, a, a different link, actually, Jess. If you're looking for the D4, um, the, the link I've dropped there, it is a good deal for everyone. So. Yeah, I just went back and looked at my um, my deal on the D2, and it, the, the this is what happens, and it's an unfortunate part of the business. I will go and pimp a eBay dealer, he will get a lot of uh, a lot of uh, traffic and sales, and he'll up his price mm -hmm. like a dick. Mm -hmm. I hate that with passion, but they do do that. Mine was twenty nine ninety five, and he has upped it to thirty five ninety nine. Oh, okay. I mean, there's nothing really we can really do about that, but yeah. uh, I just hate when they do that. Well. 
What else have we got? What you got, girl? What you got? I I got a big deal, and I I mean that literally. Here. <laughs> oh, okay. Big Pam is a mind reader. I swear. I didn't even get big deal out, and they were on it. All right, let's talk about the big K fun. Yeah, you know I'm I'm really. Is it? Is it really twenty twenty milliliter? That's a huge well, thing. Well, I don't have one, so I haven't been able to. Put, I mean, I am thinking the same thing, but you know, I have no choice but to believe that they know the the, the capacity of their tank and twenty mil. I mean, if you can't get through a day on that, you're wow, you're extreme. Let's just say extreme. I mean, that um, looks like you know, it looks like a ch- like they, it's not tall. It's really chubby. It's really wide. Yeah. Yeah, well, it is uh, 30 millimeters wide, so full 3 centimeters. It'll look uh, great. It'll match up with your 26650 mods. Um, and uh, I think the reason being, Joe, and I, I'm kind of like, you know, speculating a little bit here. Do I have a K-Fun at my desk? Oh, I do, but mine is the custom cap, so you can't really see in there that well. It, it, a little bit's lost. But... In the smaller ones, of course, the metal takes up a lot of room. As soon as you add that much tank around it, you're adding a lot more capacity, a lot faster than maybe you think you are. So that's the only thing I can think of where you can get that much more in. But 20 mil, and uh, no. yeah, this puppy's made for your for your 26650s. And it's made for those who enjoy the juice they're vaping. <laughs> really <laughs> enjoy it. Yeah, you that, definitely want to make sure your right ADV now. is in here because you know, you're all day vape because you're, you're going to be vaping in a little while. It's not just a K-Fun, it's a commitment. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I, I've heard of those people who hate filling their K-Fun because, you know, sometimes it can be perceived as being a little fiddly. Now, you know, it doesn't bother me, but there are some days, especially with the custom cap one that holds less, it's kind of like, didn't I just do this? And, uh, well, I guess you don't need to worry about that one like here. Um, there's a lot of people that could vape that for probably, you know, five days. And somebody, is that just for 26650? No. Well, I mean, no. you could put this on any any 20... You could put it on any mod. It's going to look funny. It's going to look, you know, the, 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 the top of the k is going to be fatter than your 18650 mod, but you're more than welcome to use it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just, you know, it's not something I would show off, but if you're like, hey, I only have a 20, uh, 18650 device and I want a 20 mil capacity k uh yeah, it'll work. It'll work great. Just it'll just look a little, a little weird. <laughs> There's a couple comments to put it on an ego. Now, without being <laughs> facetious here, you can. What you it comes can, down to is it totally depends on the build you're going to create. If you build a higher uh, resistance build, say you know in the 1.8 ish range, um, but not an ego if it pleases no, you. No, no, fuck that. I'm going to put it on a 510 battery auto. <laughs> I think I draw the line there, <laughs> especially because of the way the airflow works. It's not going to happen for you on an auto, but uh... all, right, all right, we won't do the auto. We'll just put it on a five ten. We'll, we'll we'll bring it up to a uh, one point five ohm belt, and we'll fire it on a uh, push button five ten battery stick, and it will work. It will. It will be ridiculous. You cannot. It will fall down. It'll probably only last a total of uh, eighteen minutes, but it will work. It will work. Now, Jill, remind me, because I, I I have the worst memory, and I keep forgetting this one, and I think the answer is no. Vapor Beast shipping no, to do Canada. Not. Yeah, okay. Vapor Beast is really awesome if you live in the United States. Everything on their website ships free. Uh, right now, they're doing a really awesome deal. Unfortunately, nobody internationally can take advantage of it. It's a it's an MVP for thirty four ninety nine free shipping. Mm. It's a really great deal. Uh, but you, it's you know we don't bring things up on done deal that doesn't um, really help uh, the international as well as the American community. Uh, but Big Bamboo has put it in the room, but uh, that's yeah. totally fine. I mean, we've got lots of American viewers, and that is a great deal. I wouldn't want to see anybody miss out on that. For a beginner or somebody uh, just looking to move up from stick batteries, that is a terrific next step. And yeah. uh, at that price, you can't beat it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it is. It is. But uh, you know, I try to keep everything. Uh, you know, everybody uh, is able to buy what they need to buy. Uh, American or uh, or Canadian or uh, international. 
Uh, now, Tiger, do you uh, have anything else you'd like to bring up? Or do you oh, I've got a few you? more. I've got a few more. We're only okay. just past the top of the hour. Did or did you? Are you just? No, no. Are you, are you winding up? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm just wanting to know if there's anything else out there you'd like to talk about. Oh, absolutely. Let's talk about the fogger, because I love talking about foggers. I'm mad about the fogger. So, um, let me give you a link. Okay. Fogger? I didn't even know her. Um, the fogger. I have two of them on my desk. There's another one on the way. This is the V4, and it comes both with the steel uh, tank and the glass. So, you've got options. Now, I love the glass. I always want to see what's in my tank. But there's certainly good arguments for the steel. Uh, it won't break if it ch if it tips over. So, no Merrick. Uh, the V4 that I ordered was one of the black ones. It was on back order, what finally became an unreasonable amount of time. And I did source one elsewhere. So, that one uh, should show up nearing the end of June. It's, it's already shipped. It's in place. So, I'm just waiting anxious for it anxiously for it to show up now because I've got all these beautiful black mods that just really really need a black fogger sitting on top so now but, uh, while I'm off cam I would like to explain some things to some people the difference between Vapor Joe's and Vapor Joe's Canada um, Tiger will pimp uh, a lot more China than I will but Tiger also finds a lot more better deals on certain things than I do because she pimps more China now, there's a reason for that. Uh, Canada, uh, for those who have 153 in the room, uh, Canada suffers uh, from a serious shipping problem. Uh, Canada, inter... Uh, how much would it cost for you to go to ship something like a 30 mil bottle of juice from one end of the country to the other? Country? Well, um, now, I'm not a shipper or a vendor, so I'm not uh, totally, totally up on this. There may be ways uh, to capitalize on, you know, when you have an account and you're doing a lot of shipping. But for me to walk into the post office, a 30 mil will not fit through the magic slot that letter mail needs to go through. So my cheapest option for somewhat of a regional uh, ship on that is 10 bucks. If I want to ship that, I'm way on the west coast. If I want to ship that all the way to the east coast, Maritimes, I'm probably looking at 17. Right. So China. Uh, so Tiger will sh will find some of the best deals uh, for Canada, and uh, as a consequence of that, we'll find some of the best deals in the industry because of it. And this fogger is no uh, no exception. Uh, she. Like this is from Desire Isig. She'll do things from different other websites, and um, I try not to do that because we have a plethora of things to to to, uh, uh, to pick from in the United States. But uh, she uh, she always gets the great deals. She, she there are some amazing things this this girl brings up. Well, thank you, Joe. And, and this one's kind of exciting because it is the latest iteration of the Fogger. We've seen right from V1, and the only reason I didn't grab a V1 is because it was that plastic tank. V2 brought us the glass tank, V2, V3 brought us the beautiful tank cover, and now V4 has brought us more juice flow and improved greater airflow. So that's why I'm really stoked for this one. You'll see in the picture here, and I'm going to point it out, the normal fogger had only two channels for juice. This one features four. Um, it's bringing the airflow up uh, in two places on the deck, so it's totally optimized for a dual coil build. And um, as well, they've kind of removed that deck. One of the complaints about building the fogger was there was a deck that came up here around the posts. You know, I've never had a problem, but I can see it, it's fiddlier. It's fiddlier. Now with the more open K-Fun-esque, if you will, um, deck, this one's going to be a breeze to build. So I'm, I'm really stoked. And yeah, this is a good buy. Um, Bud yeah, Johnson yeah. says, Desire's looking good. I hope they follow through. Um, so far, so good. And I have ordered from them. So I am, I've received a couple orders. I'm very comfortable recommending them at this point. Tiger, just for a moment, check your Skype. All right, so uh, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of, of the uh, Fogger V4, um, and you know, uh, 
you know, not just the juice flow, but I, I, I'm a big fan of the metal tank. I'm a huge fan of the metal tank. You know, the Fogger, I remember when the Fogger uh, V2 came out, and it was huge. Everybody and their brother had one. Uh, you broke, it broke so often because the uh, glass was like, I think it was, was it a crystal? Uh, now, now, now I'm not sure. I don't. It you was would be whatever it was. It was quartz. very fragile. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Quartz. It was very fragile, and uh, they moved to the V3, which was a glass and uh, stainless steel combo. And now it looks like the V4 is just pure. Uh, has a pure stainless steel tank as an option, which is great. As I'm an option, but the glass tank is included as well. You're getting both tanks for this. Right. But I've always been a big fan of the metal tank. I know people want to see their juice uh, capacity, but I like I like my tanks being a tank, literally. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm pretty careful with my stuff, so I'm not too worried about things falling over. I won't say it's never happened. I mean, my very first Fogger tank uh, did take a little spill off my desk with a little bit of help from my toddler. Uh, it fell on the cap at an angle. And I was really afraid I was going to be sweeping up glass. I was very lucky. What happened is the metal part of the cap kind of jammed into the rest. And as a matter of fact, it's on my desk here. It took a chip out of the glass. So that tank is thinner now. But I am still sporting it that way. I haven't changed it yet. You know, there's... Yeah, I think you can see that chip in there. Anyway. Excellent. Anywho... Um, we've talked about a rebuildable tank. Let's talk about a dripper. And uh, probably the best price I've seen on the Stellaire. And this one is definitely food grade steel, 316. Now that's kind of a, a nice thing. I can't say for sure what the grade on the other ones we've seen are, because they're not telling us, but this one is 316 steel. Right. So, and of course the gold plated posts inside, that is not brass, you're seeing that is gold plating. Gold being an excellent conductor and, you know, perceived safer than brass next to your juice. Yeah, uh, you know, Stellaire has been a, um, it was a sleeper, what I want to call it. Um, the Stellaire was, you know, everybody was talking about the Patriots, the Igos, um, Quasars uh, and such, and the Stellaire came out of nowhere. Now, we had the Stellaire legit, everybody kind of knew about it, but all of a sudden the clones hit. Now, the difference between the Stellaire, Stellaire and the others uh, was the posts. If you look at all the Stellaires, even the black, uh, even the crappiest, shittiest clone always has uh, the, the posts in, in uh, brass, copper, gold plating, whatever you may have. And the insulator is always nice. That is a big, uh, big problem I've noticed with a lot of uh, some um, of the drippers was the insulator uh, was made of a funky material, and when people went really, really low ohms, it would burn the insulator, and you would get a funky, nasty plastics taste in your uh, in your vape. Uh, the Stellaire was always a uh, even the, the like I said the shittiest um, clone version. They, they made sure the insulator was good and your posts were uh, you know, had good conductivity. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Stellaire. This one's only $7.89. I mean, really? Like, and you get the really cool drip tip. I mean, really? Yeah. And I'm... Buy, buy 10 of them right now. And I'm just reading Phonetics. Uh, input there on that fogger we showed you just a minute ago. Shipping to the U.S. is apparently three bucks. Now, for me in Canada, shipping was, I believe, four ninety nine, which I still considered very reasonable. Because, like we already discussed, I'm going to pay double to move anything in Canada. Uh, yeah. So, f five bucks, not a problem. Um, so that's great to know because, of course, you know, being in Canada, I don't get the rates for the other countries so it's nice to know a three three dollar charge to the u.s that's that's really great right and it's it's, it's a beautiful dripper uh, it reminds me a little bit of the of the quasar uh in terms of how the airflow works yeah um With but that long uh, slot yeah but really really nice nice dripper i mean you just can't go wrong with it well, I've definitely been reading positive uh, feedback about the Stellaire uh, on Facebook, so I, I still don't have one to, to talk about, but 
sounds like a winner. Now, I have a deal. Um, this is the AR. Everybody's been talking about the AR mechanical. Uh, I'm going to put it in the room. This is the fancy schmancy um, slotted cut, whatever you want to call it, uh, mechanical mod. Um, they finally came out with a, uh, a replica, only uh, $24.22. Uh, some people are calling the the clone better than the original because they actually there was a few uh, issues with the original that that was uh, fixed on the um, on the uh, the clone. Uh, now, personally, to be honest with you, and this is my deal. I'm not a fan of this style of mod. I'm not a fan of my battery being exposed in the manner that this this uh, this mechanical has. Because, I don't know, you drop juice in there or whatever, it's exposed, it's there. But there are plenty of people out there who love the AR mod, and that's why I put it up. Uh, when the Tesla came out, the I don't know if you guys remember the original Tesla uh, variable wattage device from like a year and a half ago. They had those long slots in them. Well, being the uh, careless vapor that I was, I've gotten plenty of juice in those slots, and, and it got into the battery, and, and it and it screwed up my mod. It screwed up the battery too. Um, so I'm not a fan of that. However, these still look smart. They look sexy. People love them. Uh, the legits are going for like eighty or ninety bucks. The uh, the clones are going for $24, and uh, from what I understand, there's plenty of discussion going on in the forum over there uh, saying that these are uh, actually an improvement over the original. Mm. And uh, if you want a black PVD and or stainless version, uh, yep. you can have it for a very, very reasonable price of uh, $24.22. Um, now, to those of you who are saying, I, I did read a comment, Merrick, I don't want to see my battery. It's kind of ugly. I agree. Um, now, I also have a mod that has the venting in the sides, the torch mod that Janet me uh, mentioned earlier. It's a little far for me to grab right now. But there is a solution to that that I executed very easily. And that is you can get colored battery wrap to mm -hmm. repair a battery that the wrap has become snagged or torn. Tiger uh, is a master at this, but... But the battery is still fine. Um, just... There's a few rules, okay? Be aware that once you cut the wrap off that battery, you want to be very careful where you set it down and what comes into contact with it because now you the whole outside of the jacket is a negative post. You set something across the top that connects and pow, you've got a dead short. So you want to do this not at a time when you can finish what you started and as soon as you cut that wrap off, you want to be putting the other one on, okay? Um, the second thing is make sure you cut it uh, ample so that it will wrap just a little around the bottom and a bit around the top. You'll want to cut it a tiny bit longer than you think you need. As it shrinks with the heat, it will kind of shrink up a little bit. Um, you don't need anything more sophisticated than a hot hair dryer or I've got a tiny little craft heat gun that I use and it just, it, in seconds, just bam, as soon as the heat touches it, that shrink wrap goes on and you can get it in solid colors. So you can kind of like color uh, coordinate your mod. I mean, that hey, black tiger, one with the green wrap inside would look pretty deadly, I think. Tiger, do they have tiger stripe? Not to my knowledge, and that's <laughs> a problem, Joe. They should. Leopard spot <laughs> and tiger stripes. I would I would, I would, would have a whole host of ARs just, just to sport my, my jungle print batteries. Now, for those of you who want a little bit of a history lesson, just a brief 30 second. Um, when the Tesla came out, which was the first um, exposed battery mod, we're gonna we're gonna say the the idea behind that was to get wraps to put on your battery to show it off. Like you can have like X Men or whatever, you would wrap your battery and then put it in the mod, and you would ex you know you'd see it. That never came to fruition, so um, that that whole idea died. Um, some people are very afraid of exposing the battery. Uh, but in the end, technically speaking, it has the best venting in case something happens. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, one more caveat: if you are rewrapping batteries, um, you are removing all of the information, uh, and you know some batteries, as we know, there isn't much information to start with. But what little there is, you're removing. Very, very good idea to with an indelible 
fine marker somewhere along the bottom edge or something where it won't show, where it won't ruin your aesthetics, mark what it was because, you know, two months from now when things get really mixed up on your desk, are you going to know whether that was a Panasonic, uh, CGR, such and such, or is that a Sony VTC? You're not going to know. Write it down. Right, right. Um, I like to keep my uh, batteries uh, segregated from uh, each other. You know, if I have uh, Sony's or Panasonic's or Samsung LG's, these vests, I like to keep them in pairs in separate boxes just in case. Um, get yourself a P-Touch. They're only 20 bucks. Um, you know, wrap, you know, you can always uh, pull out one of those uh, clear wrap uh, labels and put it on your battery. They'll do, uh, they'll They'll uh, do uh, very well for you. Okay, so that's the AR mod. Tiger, what you got for us? What have I got? I have something uh, just to prove again that I haven't forgotten about non-rebuilders. We were talking... Yes, again. Uh, we were talking a little bit last week about these little puppies. Now, the ones we were talking about were the Mars Tech. This is the same animal with a different name. This is the KW6 Mini MT3. It uh, it acts like an EVOD, but in my opinion, looks kind of cooler. Um, I have one right here. As do I. Uh, you know, they make a great little go out and about setup because it's just something you don't have to worry about. If I did lose this, smash it, run over it, I'm mm -hmm. not going to cry, right? And uh, these are a little nicer, I think, than the EVOD styles. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll, I'll rock an EVOD, no problem. But I like these because of the uh, matched anodized aluminum drip tip instead of the plastic. I, I love that anodized aluminum and I love the clear tank that lets me see exactly where my juice is at. Mm -hmm. So these are, these are nice and uh, they usually run a little more expensive than this. But right now, as long as you don't mind black, you can get them for three and a quarter. You know, it's funny. Uh, our vapors, we are spoiled. Uh, if this was out two years ago, we'd be paying 20 bucks. Oh, for yeah. Um, this is so, so cheap. So, so worth buying a few. Just to have, like, I have an entire... Um, I don't know, Tiger pimped something a while ago. It was like a little uh, mod stand for egos. It wasn't really for egos. It was repurposed for egos. But I have like five or six ego twists with various little evods and, and such on them. And I use them to go out with. This is a perfect um, little uh, bottom coil to go out with. Now, I have mine here on a uh, 1300 mod uh, um, this is the Smoke Tech 1300 mod twist. Uh, these work great. Again, born on Fast Tech, and uh, the uh, the little Clearmeister Tiger is pimping right now. They just work great. You throw them here in your top pocket. Uh, you're out the door, and you're good to go. I don't want to count. See this big moment monstrosity right here? I'm not taking this with me when I go out. It's just too big. I can't keep it in the cup holder. I hit the accelerator on my car. Thing flies in the back seat. I don't need that. It, it, it just pisses me off. This is perfect to go out with. Mm -hmm. um, and it's 1300 model, last you most of the day. And, uh, you know, that little uh, tank that uh, she's pimping, they work great. And they use the uh, you know, pro tank heads all day long. Yeah, for sure. And what I typically do, I mean, a lot of us, uh, you know, I use six milligram in most of my rebuildables because uh, they hit hard and produce a lot of vapor. And I just, I, you know, can't handle the higher nick. But when I use something like this, for those of you going, oh, well, you know, that just won't work for me because I vape too low. Well, get yourself some 18 or the 18 you still have laying around. That's what goes in these. 12 minimum, 18. Yep. And I'm getting, you know, more of a fix out of every puff and it, it'll get me through the day. Right, and you know, listen, we all, you know, I have a, a, a copper with a tobe on it, and I have all my DNA 30s. There is a place for this in your life as a vapor. Uh, don't be ashamed to rock a twist in an EVOD style uh, um, bottom coil. Uh, it's, it's good to keep in the car. Throw it in your glove compartment just in case shit. That's why, just in case shit. It also makes us. And, you know, let me pontificate for just a moment, Joe. It makes us good vape ambassadors. 
because when I go out and about, I don't carry this with me. That's kind of inaccessible to most people. You show somebody with a cigarette this and go, oh, look, here's your alternative. They're going, am I taking up weightlifting or quitting <laughs> smoking? Um, you show them this. And now you're talking about something they can see making the jump to. So, you know, let's let's not forget our roots. I, I always have something like this on hand and nearby and in use. Right. Uh, and they work. You know, people don't realize this. Uh, in the age of mechanicals, drippers, jennies, um, pretty tubes and, uh, you know, decorated mods, the biggest, absolute biggest deals we put up R4, twist batteries, EVODs, yeah. um, and EVOD style, uh, you know, portable, because most of us, believe it or not, still did cardamizers. People don't realize this shit. Uh, we think that, you know, the cardamizer is dead and gone. The cardamizer is still the biggest selling vape device going. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, and... Uh, Something like this is just easy. You just twist, spill and vape, and you're off to the races. And as uh, you can see, I've been vaping mine here. It produces great vapor. Right. I mean, uh, I like I said, here's another, you know, the, the MVP, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, I taste uh, V3, another just good fill and vape, ready to go. I'm not ashamed. I have 120 mods, and I will still rock this all day long. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, okay, 2.30, and we have 141 in the room. Tiger, do you have anything else you want to talk about? I guarantee you there's a few out there you still want to talk about. One, well, one more that I had lined up, so let's do it. Um, for those of you who were excited about these but not excited about the color choices, you know, all three of them, black, silver, and green, well, now you have more choices. Black, silver, green gray blue and red and i gotta say the blue and red are awfully pretty um these are the dna box mods coming out of china for 56 bucks with the lipo batteries inside battery packs and um yeah more colors now i um this is the 30s right i only have the 20 i haven't got my 30s yet um let me let me grab one hold on no nope. no nope. it's in the car oh okay um i have one uh they're pretty impressive um this is how it works if it comes from hot e-cig they suck if they come from clouper um and um Oh, the other one, uh, eight cigar. Uh, they're good. Depends on what you're getting. Uh, the e the thirties are are. If you're getting a twenty, it's a it's, it's a toss up. Thirties have long since been uh, changed and upgraded, and they're all good. Um, I'm impressed with these. Uh, down to the sticker, they actually uh, the twenties. The wires are exposed and are all over the place. The thirties, they actually put a little window in there. They put the plastic down. It looks really, really nice. Uh, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised how the average vapor now will have access to a CHDNA device, and uh, it will, uh, it will change your vaping experience. They're really, really nice for the price. They're really, really nice. I mean, the box mod like this would cost you 250 bucks just six months ago. Now you got them for 50 bucks. So uh, it's uh, it's just it's just it's a wonderful time to be a vapor. <coughs> Alrighty. <laughs> well, thank you, Lady Pitbull. Very kind. All right, Joe. You got anything else you want to talk about? We have. Yeah, I'm, uh... just, I'm just I'm just checking to see if something is in stock real fast. Alrighty. Uh, give me one second. Hmm. <laughs> well, okay. I, I guess I'm going to have to wear the hat every week. <laughs> so this is different. Uh, you know, Vapor Joe's is not against 
putting up a deal on legit devices. Everybody's like, oh, you're for clones. No, we're for price. Um, here's a link to um, the Patriot in gunmetal. Uh, this is a new uh, version of the Patriot uh, Atomizer. Uh, this is the version uh, 1.2. This particular vendor ships to Canada, but on uh, on this particular deal, you get free juice. And uh, in America, you get free shipping, uh, and uh, you get free drilling uh, on, on this device. This is the brand new uh, gunmetal uh, finish for those of you who uh, who like that. It's absolutely gorgeous beautiful if you want a legit device it's eighty dollars and 99 cents uh in the united states again you get free shipping anywhere in the world you're going to get your the free 10 mil model uh 10 mil bottle of juice and a free drilling option if you want them to drill out your uh your air holes to a specific uh uh specific size so they go full bore now vapor dna is a is a wonderful wonderful website uh they sell all the uh high-end stuff uh, it's kind of like vape rev, but without the attitude. That's the way I look at it. And uh, again, they have uh, every order gets free juice. Uh, if it's over 50 bucks, you get free shipping. Uh, if you use coupon code Joe10, you will get 10% off uh, everything on the website. And uh, you should really, really check them out. If you're looking for some high end stuff, some legit stuff, you know, you don't want to buy the clones, they have, uh, you know, everything you're, you're, you're looking for. Um, We'll sell like you know the clone of the four nine. You can go over there and buy the legit four nine. If you sell the you clone Patriot, they have the real Patriot. So if you're looking for it, they have it. Rock Miss Jess, uh, what Addy produces the most vapor? Jess, I am going to now. You're going to get as many answers as you're going to ask builders on this one. But the answer I'm going to give you is I think personally it has more to do with the build and uh, how you vape it than the atomizer itself when you're talking about most vapor. For most vapor, you're gonna wanna you know, run it hot and run it wide open. And it also depends on the juice you're using too. If you want lots and lots of vapor, use a high VG concentrated juice, okay? You don't wanna be trying that with a you know, 60 uh, PG. Uh, go as high VG as you can get your hands on and uh, lots and lots and lots of airflow, aggressive build. Um, now, to try to answer your question, there's some great atomizers out there now. Um, I'm hearing great things about the Patriot even though I don't have one. So this one Joe's just been talking about is an excellent option. Um, the Quasar, and I'm, I'm guessing from the look of them, the Quasar clones as well, also excellent. Stellaire, excellent. Um, to go a little more old school, now you want most vapor, so I'm not going to talk about the Immortalizer. The Immortalizer isn't known for vapor as much as flavor. Um, it's hard to beat an Igo uh, W4 from what I'm hearing. They are, mm -hmm. They're very, very well respected atomizers. And uh, even an Igo L, if you want to go real old school. Um, Shit, yeah, an Igo L, an Igo W, mm -hmm. uh, Igo W3, 4, well, I think they're up to the Igo W7 now. Mm -hmm. Now, one I just built, one I just built, and I'm, uh, you know, so I haven't had it long enough to really, really, uh, you know, get too, too excited about it or, or have a real fixed opinion. But just last night, I finally built my Igo M, and, you know, with the airflow, uh, there's no adjustment or drilling necessary. This thing, you can breathe through it the way you breathe in a room. And I'm not even running it wide open, to be really honest. I'm running it at two-thirds. That's the air holes in this thing, okay? So now that's sitting on a 26650 mod. That that's a that's a um, th yeah that would that would look flush on an 18650. So you get the idea, okay? Now I can even open that up one hole more, and that's on both sides. So we're talking stupendous airflow on this puppy. I've built it to 0.38 ohms, and uh, I just stoked the wick. So I'm probably not going to get a real mouth to hit, but. Yeah, I mean, somebody's asking uh, what 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 drip tip do you uh, want to put on uh, on your drippers. You know, I have to be honest with you, and I hate, you know, saying, oh, you know, China, China, China. However, Fast Tech has the best in the. I don't care where you're from, and this is why I pimp Fast Tech all day long. The best, the best selection of everything. But in terms of this, 
the best selection of drip tips in the world. There's no website in the world that comes within 5% of what Fast Tech Pen has in terms of uh, drip tips. There are thousands of drip tips on Fast Tech. And they, uh, everything from brass to, to stainless steel to PVD, everything you could ever want in terms of, of, of uh, drip tips. Just go on Fast Tech and type drip tip. You will get pages and pages of drip tips. Tiger, you hurt somebody. What happened? Yeah, I didn't want to. I hate doing it, but you know, there was there was one warning. And... Okay. Uh, but get over there and check out the drip tips. Um, they're cheap. Usually, you can get yourself a set of five drip tips for under ten bucks. Um, wide bore is my favorite for drippers, only because you know you're going to get uh, uh, just a lot of vapor to your face. Some people like uh, tall and skinny, others short and fat. Uh, but there are a bajillion, bajillion drip tips on Fast Tech. Absolutely, absolutely wonderful place for drip tips. Um, would you agree, Tiger? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's where probably ninety percent of my drip tips have come from. You know, yeah, I, I, you know, I used to spend, you know, as a, as a new vapor, five, six, seven dollars on a drip tip. You know, uh, now if you want, you know, high-end Pyrex drip tips or what have you, you know, you definitely go to the uh, to your local uh, places. But you, you know, you're not going to go to Fast Tech for the one-off um, drip tips, or if you want something like Cherry Vapes uh, one-off, uh, no, you're not going to you're not going to go there for that. But stainless steel is king at Fast Tech when it comes to drip tips. They have everything under the sun. I mean, it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, the level of stock that they have. So it is 2.37 a.m. Um, we've gone a little long. If anybody has any questions, really quick. Oh, Bud Johnson's saying the Tobe. Yeah, I've heard good things about that one, too. Uh, Dan and Janet says uh, Fast Tech does have Pyrex. They do. They do have Pyrex, but they're not. Um, they're mass produced out of a machine. They're not hand blown. It's, uh, I'm not a big fan of the Pyrex drip tips yet. But they have some really, really wonderful, uh, you know, stainless steel, copper, brass, whatever, whatever you guys want to want to use. But um, oh, by all means, share your link. The Caterpillar by Lightsig USA. Uh, I, this is the new Anokin um, dripper. Cheap? No, I'm sorry. This is the smoke tech dripper. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, the cheap, eleven bucks from Lightsig USA. I'm just taking a look at it. Okay, a twenty six six fifty Nemesis. I haven't heard anything about it yet. Um, if you're really, really in love with the the way the Nemesis works, and you're just looking for something twenty six fifty, uh, twenty six six fifty. You might consider a Stingray. The switch is essentially um, the same mechanism, okay? They've, they've used that type of switch, which I love. And uh, I've been really happy with this puppy. Um, now, the person who put the Caterpillar in, um, in chat, I'm looking at it. Uh, it reminds me a lot of a Igo W. Um, you know, it's got some nice accents, huge airflow uh, chambers. But for eleven dollars and ninety-five cents, that's a really good deal. Coming out of Lightsig USA, I'm a big fan of the, the uh, this particular vendor uh, out of Pennsylvania. Um, really, really good guys. I've I've bought a lot from them over the years as a new vapor. Um, but for eleven dollars and ninety-five cents for this new Smoke Tech Caterpillar RDA, I may even run this. This is a pretty cool-looking um, dripper. What do you think, Tiger? Um, the Caterpillar is interesting. It's just one that I ha hasn't made it near enough the top of my list because there's so many, right? And, you know, I right. want to try one of each, but you can't. You just can't. Right, right. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, it's it's cheap. It uh, looks good. They're showing it on top of a Magneto, so it looks really nice on a Magneto. Uh, but uh, normally speaking, it's got that nice gold accent, got the three posts. They're not thumb screws, which, I mean, I'm sorry, they're not um, Allen key screws, which are 
that people hate. And uh, hey, for a good uh, standard dripper, I think it's pretty nice. Thanks for putting the link in there. I'm just looking really quick if anybody else has any other questions. Oh, excellent. Thanks, Big Bam. Uh, Big Bam's telling me there is a price drop on the 26650 uh, Black Copper Stingray. That's always nice to hear. Um, it's a mod I'm very, very pleased with. So, uh, cheaper is even better yet. Cheaper is good. <laughs> <clears throat> now, how, how much did it come down? Let me take a look. I'm going over there. Oh, it's 25 bucks now. So a full 10 bucks. Yeah. It Wait for Schmo. Day. That discussion was beyond the scope of our uh, show. We're here to talk about deals. What did I miss? Oh, uh, speculation about your illustrious past. Oh. Well, there's a show on after this about my illustrious past. It's called... The... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, honestly, uh, that's a, uh, that's a, well, according to Big Bam Boom, it went from $3,450 to $2,500, uh, but no, it's $25, uh, the full $10 drop, that's a great, great price. Uh, I have a, uh, 26650, uh, Stingray, so, um, excellent, excellent, uh, excellent buy. Okay, so the time is 2.41. Tiger, is there anything else you want to put out there? Did you? Is there anything they missed? No, I, like I, I'm, I am out of deals that I lined up ahead of time. So, yeah, if nobody had any other questions, we are, we are at the end of the show. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for uh, coming out um, on behalf of the Vapor Joes Network. Thank you so much. And... Uh, we will see you next week, and Tiger will upload this episode of Done Deal. Yes, and, uh, yes, I will. I promise. Yes. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, and uh, we will see you next week for another episode of Done Deal, Vapor Joe's Live, and uh, we'll also see you on the Underground. You betcha. Have a good week.